Okay, uh, I'm Lucas Freeman, and this is my final international clock for SEE320. Um, here's the clock here itself. I've got two seven segment displays showing hours, minutes, seconds, and AM, PM if you're in uh, 12 hour time. Uh, over here is two banana plugs for transmit and receive for the serial protocol. They are uh, tied to uh, serial three. Uh, however, I've got it configured to serial zero for the USB at the moment to use the serial test. Uh, push button for 12, 24 hour time, and then plus one hour and plus one minute there. I'll show you then when it's live. Uh, DC supplies here. Um, it's got a battery in it at the moment. Uh, so runs on a nine volt rail into the VN supply of the Arduino. Um, but it also runs off USB, obviously. Display button to turn on this status panel. Uh, turn it on and off. This shows the reference time of UTC zero and it shows the UTC offset. Um, here's the linear pot, 10K linear pot to move between UTC offset. So zero at the center, minus 12 plus 14. Um, and then seconds are up here, which analog 60 seconds. Um, all right. Piling. And uploading. So 5% of program storage and 9% of memory. All right. I'll run off the DC supply. So turning on the DC, shows a welcome message. And then uh, we're seeing the reference time here in UTC zero. And you can see that the UTC offset is zero there and it increments by half hours right the way up to plus 1400 and right the way back to minus 12. So uh, that uses the um, Arduino command map which makes it really linear and I've also got uh, uh, an accumulator on there to smooth out the analog input. So I've got a push button to turn on and off that display just to make sure like so it doesn't shine and uh, it's only really needed when you want to set the offset anyway. Around here we've got the time and uh, you can just see the seconds reset back to zero and that's just um, 60 second increment using a servo. Um, I did start off with um, a step motor but I didn't incorporate a sensor to check when it was at the zero position and um, it was starting to make things extra complicated so I thought like this was simplicity and it represented the time well and accurately. Uh, all right, so 1653 is what we've got at the moment. Um, using the hour step, steps through easily and the minute step and you can see that when it ticks over from 59, it also incremented the hour. Um, I'll just move past PM. So you can see it's got 12 and 24 hour time there. And so it's 1 PM and there's a 400 millisecond debounce on this, these push buttons. 1 AM, so it's 1 AM. Um, if we turn this display back on, it's showing the correct time. It, the, back panel and the updates when the um the screen is on to save um cycles so if i turn it off there turn it back on it's up it's reset um and you can see then all of these updated so let's say we want to make it um plus 10 there so you'd be expecting 1400 which it's got there and then 12 and 24, we've got two. Um, and we can do something like minus four, which will give you zero. And there's 12 AM there. That's about it for the actual clock. Um, really happy with the build. I picked a box that's slightly smaller than probably what I should have picked. And um, 
it was a bit of a challenge to get it all in there, but I think it's really readable. Um, I like the little sleek second hand. I think that looks pretty cool. It's basically just a bit of aluminium foil on there. And um, I like that everything just seems um, really like in line with all the rest of the design. Like just silver and black, really easy to read, really easy to use. And um, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna do the serial test now. Got a laptop running Windows um, and serial test. Here's my clock. Um, and I've got the comms configured for serial port zero instead of three. Uh, COM port 12. You can see that down here we have 58 seconds, or 60, 60 seconds. And then on the clock, got the correct value on the same side the other side is the same as well um, and the UTC offset works from there as well and you'll see that it's not adjusting on the screen at all when I'm turning that so it's just sending the UTC at zero seconds um, I'll put in a few values to show that it sends correctly so one second to reset it back that's one second send, and you can see on the clock, um, we'll send uh, 86390, which is just before midnight, 10 seconds before midnight. So you can see that that's correct over there. And on the clock, and it resets to midnight. Um, a couple more, 1,000 seconds means it's just sending two bytes of data rather than three. Zero, three, two, three, two. You can see that that's counting up correctly there, and the clock is still correct. Last one, 70,000 seconds, just just to show that anything works. And there it is, there, 70,000. 92640, which is what was expected. Um, and you can see also that the seconds hand, the analog seconds hand responds correctly as well. So sending one, it goes back to the start. Um, sending 30, it goes to the midpoint. And say 45, it's going out to the side. Um, and you can see down here in the corner of the serial test program that none have been sent too fast, so the program's working correctly. And that's it. The serial comms were one of the hardest things to get working on this clock, and um, I'm really happy that the protocol works as expected. Thanks. Okay, here I'm going to step through the code. Um, come in, starting off with the uh, the libraries that I included. So wire and liquid crystal I2C, um, they are used to um, communicate with the LCD uh, display screen and using an I I2C protocol. So I imported those or included those. Um, servos included, which is just one of the Arduino default um, libraries as well as a real-time clock library for using the DS1302 uh, chip. Um, all right, so just inputs and outputs. Um, here, uh, we've defined the pins for the two seven segment displays. Um, this is hours, minutes, and this is seconds, AM, PM. The enable pins, um, push button inputs, the analog input, this is addressing the LCD, um, this is addressing the servo, and here is the real-time clock. Um, this will all be covered in the report, and the code is going to be attached to the appendix. Uh, time handling. So, there's two main seconds components in this clock. Total seconds actual, which is at UTC0, and total seconds, which gets moved around and chopped and changed depending on the offset. 
um, seconds AM PM is just used to justify whether it's in the AM or the PM. So uh, we've got some bytes here for sending and receiving an array that holds the buffer of the serial data um, and then a whole heap of initializations um, that are used for displaying time to the 7 segment display and the LCD. The analog input uses an accumulator um, just to smooth out the, um, the signal in for the UTC offset. Um, I found that it, it meant that the display didn't jump around a lot uh, like it was just using the straight read. Um, server control, offsets, timers, and then a few um, readings for the push button inputs. A couple of uh, settings here, just limits on, um, on how long a day is, how many seconds, an hour adds, minutes add, that kind of thing. Um, some debounce on the push buttons as well. Into the setup. Uh, just setting everything as outputs, the push button inputs as inputs, set up a few objects, the LCD using that library, um, the servo as a PWM, pulse, uh, pulse width modulation output, um, and setting a few timers to current time with the Millis function, uh, and serial set up uh, per the protocol we're using, 57600. Uh, and uh, one stop bit, one stop bit, even parity. Okay, um, still in the setup, uh, I've got a bit of welcome text that just says my name and then clears the lines. Um, and what I've done here is set the static text of um, the LCD, uh, which means that the LCD never has to print it again. Instead of printing things like reference, it's always going to be on the screen. So just print it once and then never override it. Um, I found that really saved some cycles. All right, here's the main loop, and it's really simple because everything else calls another void. So analog sampling jumps off and looks at the accumulator and then sets the offset. Um, RTC module dot update time just reads the time out of the real time clock. Uh, initially, I was calculating all the seconds manually, and when a minute rolled over, I'd add it to a minute increment and it was really cumbersome and it was all based off millis and it just wasn't that accurate. Um, I like the idea of including a real time clock and I think it worked really well. It made everything simpler and, um, and I like that I can turn the DC off and it comes back in. Uh, serial clockwork controls all the serial comms. Uh, so, um, well, I'll jump into that when we get there. Time rollovers just is a bit to do with um, hours and minutes, specifically when you're in AM and PM. Uh, the sweep output, this uses the map command, which I found really helpful with Arduino. Um, and it maps the seconds from the real time clock between zero and 59 to 180 and 18, which are angles for the servo. So that means I found these settings were perfect to uh, make sure the clock was at like at zero degrees for zero seconds, 180 degrees for a minute and then um, right at the top for um, 90 degrees for 30 seconds. Uh, second hand dot write, so that takes the sweep output calculation and writes it to the um, servo object. Another good easy Arduino function. Time configuration uh, looks at the seven segment displays and, and maps to them. Time writing writes to the LED. Um, Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, writes the LEDs of the seven segment display. Push buttons are monitoring those inputs and then the LC display the outputs to the back. So, first thing the clock looks for is a serial event. Um, we're looking for three frames. Uh, so, while there are not three frames available and it hasn't timed out, which is 70 milliseconds, um, because the frames have 50 milliseconds to get uh, to the clock. Um, it'll just stay in this while loop for 70 milliseconds and then if it doesn't get any frames it'll move on. If it does then it puts them into this time received buffer here which um, comes from the serial read. Pretty simple, sets the time received flag as true and then it'll input that data in the serial clockwork coming up. Analog sampling. Uh, so this is an accumulator 
um, it just reads 64 um, analog values and then averages them and maps them out. So here you can see map used again to uh, get the UTC offset from negative 1200 to 1400 and then it adds that to a UTC seconds register. Um, serial clockwork. So this is only enacted if the time received flag is high. It um, sets the time received flag to low and then does some bit shifting to get the um, received seconds for those three bytes of data. Um, and receive seconds A is the bit 17 of the serial data. So instead of looking at all of the garbage data that could be in the end of the byte, it just looks at um, what a single high bit at bit 17 would be and adds that to the time if it's there, otherwise it doesn't. Total seconds actual gets updated from here and that becomes your new time on the real time clock module by writing it in this format here. Um, and this is also the serial output. So um, every 50 milliseconds it was writing out and that is shown in the serial test um, later on. Uh, so some bit shifting there to get all of the um, all the bits in the correct frames and then using serial write to output them. Time rollovers, so this is just making sure um, if the UTC rolls over into the next day that um, we're not showing any time past 24 hours. It'll roll over to midnight and start going from there. Um, some AM PM flags, if you're in, um, if you're in 12 hour mode, so you can see the seconds, the total seconds value gets adjusted depending on uh, if you're in 12 or 24 hour mode and it just gets chopped and changed. Um, so here it's getting reduced by um, 12 hours in seconds until you get a real value. Um, this is just looking at the day length and if your total seconds happen to go over, it'll it'll roll you back into midnight again. So this is all just kind of fail safes if we get some garbage data or if um, if something gets sent to it that isn't correct. Say you send a serial command with the serial test program um, longer than eight six four hundred seconds, it'll um, it'll figure it out and reset it back to midnight. Push button inputs are all pretty simple. They've got a 400 millisecond um, debounce on them, and uh, if they if they pick up, so this one is just incrementing the hour and then writing it to the real time clock module. Um, this one's incrementing the minute in a similar fashion. Time mode sets between AM and PM, and it just uses a boolean um, to to term change between AM uh, between 12 and 24 hour time. Uh, status display is for controlling that rear display and again just a boolean. Alright, time config. Um, this does some maths to separate the total seconds into the first hour and, fir and second hour increments and first and second minute, first and second seconds. Uh, so they can be written to the seven segment display as individual numbers. Um, this uh, percentage gives the remainder and uh, the modulus. And, uh, and I found that really helpful and I like that you can get use all of the maths to figure out um, all your different numbers just just from these few lines of code. I think uh, it's a really neat way to do it. Um, yep, this is just this is just a hard code to show um, midnight as 12 rather than zero zero. Um, just the way that the seconds work, it's just easy to hard code it and yeah, simple as well. All right, time writing. Um, this is just uh, multiplexing of the seven segment displays. So um, it goes into the show digit, which is a switch command I'll show later. Um, and it'll show whatever the value is and then set that digit high. And then it uses just the Arduino delay of one millisecond, which I know is blocking, but it was the simplest way to do it. And with all the other um, by using a real-time clock, it doesn't really matter if you're using a blocking delay uh, because the real-time clock operates independent of that block. So it still picks up, the time is really accurate. So that just 
does the same thing for each digit. Um, and oh yeah, I'll show those switch cases in a, a bit later. Um, the LCDs display show if the status is high, it'll turn the backlight on, and again, do some calculations to show um, the first and second digit of the hours, minutes, and seconds. And then um, there's a bit of, uh, there's a few if statements down here to just check if the display actually needs updating because printing um, to the display takes clock cycles. So it only prints an update if it needs one. So if it's 12 o'clock and it's only one minute past 12, then you don't need to print the 12 until you get to 59 and then you roll over to one and you need to reset your hours. So I found that really like it was efficient and it prevented flickering and, um, and lost cycles in the clock. Uh, so that does that for um, for every every value that updates. And uh, as I said earlier, the static displays just get written at the start and never need to change. Um, the UTC offset, just adding the leading zeros and positive and negatives. And then, of course, if um, the push button for that display is low, then it just turns the backlight off. Okay, so these are the switch commands. Um, they take in the digit that has been sent to it um, based on those hours, minutes, seconds, and then output um, a different case depending on, on which one is input. Um, so they're just the highs and lows uh, for the seven segments. I'll show that in a bit. So we've got two of those show digit cases, uh, one for the first seven segment display and one for the second, uh, all pretty self-explanatory. Um, there's a case in here in the second digit, second digit to show the AM, PM again, which is just, just coming from that flag, simple. Uh, lastly, here are just the, um, the voids showing um, which LEDs to write high and low to show each digit. So, you know, a one, um, uh, or that's, that's a zero, so it's, everything's high except for, obviously, the middle, the center um, LED, and yeah, they're all just or just how to represent each digit. Um, and there's another one for this uh, second seven, seven segment display. And finally, an AM, a PM, and a blank. And that's it.